Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about unofficial upgrades on the brand new Synology DS720 Plus. Now I am doing a whole series of unofficial memory upgrades across the, uh, the majority of the brand new Synology disk station NASes, but like all the other videos I am adding this disclaimer right now because it's very very important and if you take anything away from this video let this next bit be the most important. Now Synology make it abundantly clear that you should use their memory as as well as that they do strongly recommend you do not exceed the recommended maximum in their case for this device it is six gig now the cpu inside the intel j4125 supports up to eight gig but even then eight gig should really be the threshold now the device has uh, two gig of ddr4 memory soldered onto the board and there is an available so dim slot inside for upgrades now Synology do state that the reason you should use the memory uh, that they produce is because it is tested in line with their systems and it is the it's like produced parallel to their systems and if you utilize these devices in an unsupported fashion then chances are that they're not going to be able to provide you technical support for an unsupported config configuration so do bear that in mind also by exceeding both the manufacturer's recommended maximum memory and the CPU manufacturer's uh, recommended maximum, you do potentially destabilize your memory uh, and therefore the entire system can collapse. So do bear that in mind. Make sure you've got multiple backups. Make sure you have got snapshots. Make sure you've got offsite backups, USB or NAS to NAS. Make sure you've got at least two layers to that backup strategy. And most important of all, at the end of this video, I'll show you, make sure you run memory tests utilizing the Synology Assistant memory test functionality that will be included at the end of the video. But that disclaimer aside, let's talk. Today we're looking at the Time Tech memories, one of the, probably one of the most budget memories that I've talked about here. I've already tested this on a few NASes and it has succeeded. We've done a few tests. We've allocated some memory to a VM. We've checked the resource monitor. We've seen that it's running fine and we've ran memory tests, all of which boxes were ticked. This device, uh, we're going to be testing both the 8 gig module and the 16 gig module that arrive at 35 nicker for the 8 gig module and around about 60 pounds, give or take, for the 16 gig module. Now there's lots of reasons why you might do this. For virtual machines, you want more allocated memory. Maybe you're running a real high-end Plex Media Server setup and you don't want the bottleneck of the memory there. There's lots of reasons why you would want to ex exceed the memory to this degree. Indeed, surveillance is another key area with higher, bigger cameras utilizing more memory with their recordings of simultaneous cameras in a user environment. But nevertheless, a number of you may also go down this route because Synology's 4 gig module for this device is about 80 or 90 nicker for 4 gig, which is quite a lot of money. And again, I keep saying nicker, but I of course mean pounds. Sorry, I grew up in East London. That's how these things pan out. But whether, wherever you are in the world, the Synology 4 gig modules are a little bit pricier than a lot of their contemporaries. And moreover, and quite annoyingly, there isn't a vast amount of it. Synology doesn't produce a huge amount of these memory module upgrades because not everyone utilizes the where, whereas traditional memory or companies like Samsung and um, Kingston, Crucial and TimeTech, these can be used in laptops and, and lots of other devices. So they're more abundantly available, but they do use different cells. Typically, high Nink or high Yink um, uh, memory modules on there. But do remember, if you go for any memory in, Go for dual rank memory where possible. It's less worrying on the 8 gig module where um, a single rank memory still has two chips on each one, um, on each cell with four on the front. But on a dual rank module, it means that this on either side of the sodium module. And therefore, it's better separated and each cell is only 2 gig. Something that this CPU deals with a great deal better. Single rank 16 gig memory will hit the ground and not run. So again, do go to the links in the description to NAS Compare. So I've done a full breakdown of memory that's supported. But just read all of those warnings. It's very, very important. So... First and one we're going to run is we're going to do the 8 gig test first and then after that it should be successful. I'm quietly confident then we'll do the 16 gig straight afterwards and then I'll show you guys how to do the memory test. But 
bear in mind that all of the NASes I run in all of these tests have already got the operating system and the RAID already pre-installed. I've already set it up, set it up with the default memory, powered it down safely, let the disks stop, and then from there, with the power disconnected, we can go ahead and upgrade that memory. So in the case of this device, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those drives. There's a little, little Seagate Iron Wolves inside, as you can see. There is our sodium module. There, the empty space, I should say, the slot. And again, we're gonna go for the eight gig module first. So let's grab that eight gig stick. Go for that one there. Always make a point of holding the edges of the module. You don't really want to touch the main connector at all, although sometimes it is quite difficult on these devices to get these in. Um, pop that in there. It's fairly clear which side you should be touching, to be honest. Uh, which side you should be connecting because one side is larger than the other. But as you can see, we've now pre-installed that 720 uh, sodium uh, slot there. We've populated it with the 8 gig stick. So there we are. It's all in there. Now we're going to reintroduce our hard drive media. And then we're going to reconnect this device over there and then boot it up to see how DSM runs. Let's pop that in there. And there you go. We've got it pre-installed. Let's make our way. In, let's get this connected in and make our way into DSM, fingers crossed, and double check that this memory has been recognized. Let's head over. Okay, so good news. It does look like the DS720 Plus has booted with the Time Tech memory. And as you can see here, there's the IP of the one we've scanned for, and it has found the NAS. Before I go any further, though, I just want to remind you guys about the memory test facility. And I'll try to tag a little reminder on at the end as well. If you do want to do a memory test on your NAS, and I recommend you do it periodically, just go into the Synology Assistant tool, go into the little cog, and here you will find an option that you can tick to enable memory testing. From there, once you've got a list of NASes available, right click and an option to memory test becomes available. And you can follow some steps here for the NAS to run a memory test internally. It will differ the amount of time it takes based on the memory that you and the power of the NAS you're using. Typically, I've done these in the past and they have taken a few hours and it will reboot the system and make it inaccessible for a period of time. So do make sure you run it when you're not gonna be in a time when you need to access your NAS at a priority. So do bear that in mind. Um, but I'm not gonna run it now because we do want to double check if the eight gig and indeed the 16 gig after has ran. So here we are on the desktop, a few things we want to test. We want to go into the resource monitor, of course, and we want to go into the control panel and we want to run uh, a quick virtual machine area just to double check that the system is indeed able to allocate that memory. So first and foremost, let's go into the performance monitor first. Let's have a look at the resource monitor even. As we can see, we're utilizing a little nugget of memory there. We are running quite a lot of apps here in the background and they're all taking their impact there in terms of resources. If we go into the memory area, we're seeing graphical inconsistencies here. And this has been an ongoing trend, really, with unofficial memory. We do see more and more just slight blips like this bar at the bottom and just areas where you can tell that there are issues there in the background. And again, one of those things that you can tell the Synology is running an unsupported setup. Now, if we go to the task manager, we're able to see how much memory is being utilized by different applications. And of course, right now, we're not running a particularly demanding setup. So even if we didn't have uh, this unofficial eight gig stick, we wouldn't be maxing out the memory. If we go into the control panel, we can have a look at the information center and we're able to see 10 gig of utilized memory there, that physical memory there. So again, there's the two gig that the 720 arrives with and the eight gig we have installed. So, last, we're going to go into the Virtual Machine Manager. We've opened it up, and we don't have a VM in place, so what we're going to do is create a brand new VM, and we're not going to install Windows or anything. We just want to create a nice sandbox VM environment on the DS720. We're going to utilize two of the available CPU cores on this four-core NAS, and as we can see, all 10 gig can be allocated, so let's be really greedy. Let's allocate 7 gig, an odd number, to our VM. Click next. We have to name it, of course. Move over to the next section. Give it some space, maybe 250 gigabytes. Go with the VM. 
And as we can see here, moving forward, it's now going to start allocating the original setup of this VM. We're not going to bother with the guest tool because we're not going to go too far, but I recommend you use the guest tool for Windows VMs, just so you know, moving forward. And we're going to give everyone access to this. Why not? We're going to delete it soon after anyway. And we're going to power on the VM after it's done. And what we want to see is one, that the VM is going to run. And two, we want to see that the memory is indeed taken by the virtual machine. So it's going to take a few extra seconds while it prepares our VM and executes the VM. And the effects of this memory being allocated are instantly visible. As you can see there, 85% of that memory has been utilized. There's the 7 gig for our VM. We can connect to it in another tab. And if we go back to the resource monitor, we can see that 7.23 gigabytes have now been utilized by this virtual machine. In, so that is a combination of the virtual machine and presumably 230 megabytes or so being taken by the Synology Virtual Machine Manager tool. So for me, that's looking like it is a success, although of course, do bear in mind long-term stability and of course, make sure that you utilize the um, memory testing facility. We're gonna shut this unit down in a sec. In fact, let's do that now. Let's come out of that. And I'm gonna force close this VM, although I strongly recommend if you do shut down a VM to do it safely. I'm forcing it shut down because this isn't a real VM, but I recommend you do it properly. We're gonna let that in the background, shut itself down. Then we're gonna delete this VM as well to make sure that it doesn't impact uh, the next test when we run that 16 gig stick understanding that's going to delete that and then we're going to shut down this now so make sure if you are going to emulate these tests and again i'm doing this so you don't have to uh, make sure you leave a certain period of time for the discs to spin down inside your synology nas so we're going to shut this unit down and shut it down there and while it does that uh, just a quick thing just to add in the middle of the video i might touch this on at the end as well do bear in mind that this is the memory we're utilizing today it is a dual rank very important dual rank uh, module there's an 8 gig module down there and that is the 35 pound model and there's the 60 pound model there this is the one i am utilizing for these tests again there will be links in the description but please be safe and understand that you are running an unsupported setup i've just heard the nas power down in the background so now i'm going to head over install the 16 gig module and reboot this device i'll fast forward to the reboot of the ds720 plus if indeed it successfully does so okay so we're back into our ds720 we've shut it down installed the 16 gig module and rebooted and i'm pleased to say that the timetech 16 gig module has at least been recognized you can see it there there's the ip you can ignore that ds20 uh, 220 that i'm running for another test for another video and as we can see here going into the device we can run exactly the same test let's get virtual machine manager up and running have a look at the virtual machine and we're going to create a brand new virtual machine in just a second. Let's open the control panel and at the same time get the resource monitor open. And we'll see if we've still got those graphical inconsistencies and if things have been allocated. So in the information center we can scroll down and as you can see 18 gig. That's the 2 gig internally soldered to the board and our 16 gig module have been recognized. The memory utilization is pretty low and if we go into the resource monitor even more of those graphical inconsistencies at the bottom there. But again, a lot of that we do see from time to time. And if we do to sort of refresh that, it does seemingly seem to repair it, but it would be remiss not to highlight the fact that there definitely seems to be inconsistencies here on screen. Now, if we head into the task manager, run that in the background and with the virtual machine tool, we can go ahead and create that virtual machine again from scratch. And we're going to go for that Windows VM environment. We're going to run it on the 720. We're going to use two cores. And we can see all the way down to that 18 gig. So we're going to go for a 16 gig VM this time. Run a VM test. Click next. Give it, um, let's have a little look. It's now suggesting that the maximum memory we are exceeding. Let's go back. Let's go back because we are, of course, utilizing some of that memory for other processes. So let's pop that there at 14 gig. Go for 250 gig again. Default network. 
And again, I know I've already mentioned it, but I do recommend that uh, guest tool. Incredibly useful, and I've used it in every one of my VM videos. But let's go ahead and install that VM, make sure everyone's got access, power on the virtual machine, and click Apply. And as it does that, and of course, as mentioned, I've already told you guys about the memory testing facility at the top of the video, uh, or in the middle of the video, and with this test, remember that the things that we're showing today are indicative of just this test, and they are not representative of the long-term utilization of unofficial memory. So again, backup, 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 recovery, redundancy, and make sure you stay safe. You are running an unsupported system. But the VM there running in the background, if we had put a disk on there, we could have utilized it. But we can see the task manager has appropriated that memory that we've stuck to it, that 14 gig with 230 megabytes, give or take, presumably being used by uh, the virtual machine tool, although obviously it is a decimal place, so it's precisely not that. But I would say that for now, this system has indeed recognized this larger memory quantity. So if you have found this video helpful or you are feeling brave enough to try this yourself, there are links in the description that will take you to the supported compatibility list of which I do recommend you check out and I do upgrade the options on that list. Ignore that beep. That is a QNAP I've got on the other side of the office. But you can always contact the guys at span.com who will talk you through how to do this yourselves. And I recommend if you do want to go for a no hassle setup and let them do it for you, they will help you along on that as well as provide additional support along the way. But thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe if you want to learn more. And I will see you next time.